Are you mad is a question, a good one. And this is a tag. But the next thing I'm going to say is a question tag, isn't it? With the help of my cat and dog, today I will teach you about question tags. If you already know everything about them, you're watching the wrong video, aren't you? Now then, there are lots of ways to ask straightforward questions. When will you please stop making these videos? What's wrong with you? Who do you think you are? Why do you even bother making these videos? How much hate mail do you receive? Well, they're all good, nice, grammatical, solid questions. And by the way, my answer to all of them is, I don't know. But what I do know is, all of those questions start with a question word. Remember this point. There's another way to form questions using things called question tags. There are a few differences between tag questions and regular questions. But first, a couple of explanations. A tag question is a question formed using a tag. You are mad, aren't you? And a question tag is just the final part of a tag question. He's an idiot, isn't he? A tag question has two parts. The first part is a statement, not a question. And the second part is the question tag. It's the tag that changes the statement into a question. And the two parts are separated by a comma. The grass is long at the moment. It's a statement, it's true. I haven't cut it for a couple of weeks. To make it a question, the grass is long. To make that into a question, you have to add a tag. But first, here are the rules about question tags. The verb in the tag has to be the same as the verb in the statement. So in the grass is long, the form of the verb to be is is. So I have to use that. But before I can do that, there's another rule. One side of the tag question is negative and the other side is positive. Is is positive, so I have to use the negative, isn't. Okay, so now it's safe to try it. The grass is long, isn't it? Mm, something sounds wrong there. Wait a minute. There's another rule and I forgot to use it. The first two rules are about grammar, positive, negative, and using the correct form of the verb. But there's a rule about pronunciation. With tag questions, there's always either a rising or falling intonation. We never say them with a flat tone, like a robot, and there's a reason for this. Tag questions are used for three main reasons, and they are when looking for agreement or confirmation, when asking a real question, or when asking someone to do something. When you're expecting, hoping for agreement, you use a falling tone on the tag. So this grass is long. I can see it, you can see it, it's true. So I say, this grass is long, isn't it? It's not a really strong intonation. I mean, you don't say, the grass is long, isn't it? Here are some more examples where I'm not really asking a question, I'm just looking for agreement. Note that the statement part can be positive or negative, but the tag will probably be the opposite. There are lots of apples on this tree, aren't there? We didn't grow many strawberries this year, did we? I have planted a lot of potatoes this year, haven't I? This is a well, isn't it? We use tag questions when looking for confirmation. When you think something is true, you're mostly sure of it. Well, you ask someone else to agree with you. And when you're asking someone a real question or asking someone to do something, asking a favor, we use a rising intonation. And usually in this situation, 
the statement part of the sentence will be negative. And as well as the rising intonation, because it's a real question, there's also something else involved, and that is facial language. What? I suppose you could call it body language, but often when you ask a question, you're waiting for an answer. And what our face does is your eyes go up and you maybe you raise your eyebrows. So you would say something like, wow, you won the lottery? <laughs> maybe not quite that much, but that's close to what happens. You haven't got a pen I can borrow, have you? I need to make an emergency call. You haven't got a phone I can use, have you? You don't know when the next train is coming, do you? That was a lot of examples, wasn't it? So let's look in more detail, uh, focusing on getting the form of the verb correct. It was a hot day yesterday, wasn't it? She shouldn't eat the crocodile, should she? You've been to the moon, haven't you? He can juggle, can't he? They wouldn't believe you, would they? You couldn't help me, could you? You're Bulgarian, aren't you? We weren't allowed to touch the fruit, were we? This cat doesn't understand English, does it? This is great, isn't it? The train hasn't arrived yet, has it? You will wake me up on time, won't you? You had been told about the party, hadn't you? We must visit them soon, mustn't we? Right, you're probably aware that the rules of English seem straightforward. And then there's a but. So here is the but of tag questions. I said that the verb in the tag has to match the verb in the statement. Well, it's not exactly true. There are a few exceptions and here they are. When the statement has I am in it, the tag doesn't use I am. It uses aren't. I'm confusing you, aren't I? Uh, I can't help you, I'm making a video, aren't I? When the statement contains I'm not, the tag contains am I? I'm not very tall today, am I? I'm not real, am I? When there's no modal verb or auxiliary verb, do, be or have, in the statement, and the verb is something like run, sit, eat, play, jump, the tag doesn't use that verb. You use the verb to do in the same tense. You like eating grass, don't you? Like is positive, present simple, so we use don't, which is negative, also present simple. Your dad eats metal things, doesn't he? Eats is positive, third person. Doesn't is negative, third person. We thought we were on another planet, didn't we? Thought is positive, past simple. Didn't is negative, past simple. Another difference is when you make a suggestion using the word let's meaning let us. When the statement starts with let's, then the tag has to have shall we. Let's go to the cinema with all the cats from the village, shall we? Let's spend all our money on fish and let them go free in the garden, shall we? Another exception is when your statement is a negative imperative, that is, when it's a command, an instruction, an order, not to do something. So you would probably be using don't and then a main verb. The usual tag after a negative imperative statement is will you. Don't eat all of those cakes, will you? Don't show horror films to my cat, will you? Don't forget to call me, will you? After a positive imperative, there are a few tags you can use, all using modal verbs. Can you? 
could you, will you and would you. Be careful when you play with tigers, will you? Hold this door open for me, would you? This is too much information about tag questions. Open that window so I can escape, could you? There are even more uses for question tags. What I've covered so far are the main uses. If question tags are quite new for you, this might be a good time to stop, go and get a cup of tea, do something else, because you might have too much to think about. But if you want to get into the detail parts, stick with me, and here we go. Okay, I've covered the verb in the tag and how it usually matches the verb in the statement, except for the exceptions like let's, shall we? Have you noticed that when the tag is negative and uses not, they're all in contracted form? Wasn't it? Isn't it? Couldn't we? It's nice, isn't it? She's just exploded, hasn't she? You hate me, don't you? That's how it is. It's not for convenience, it's just that's the rule. We never say, this is your phone, is not it? You have two heads, do not you? And the final word in the tag is always a pronoun. We never repeat the noun from the statement. We would say, Dian has won the lottery, hasn't he? We would not say, Dian has won the lottery, has not Dian, or hasn't Dian. When the subject of the statement is there, then you use there in the tag. There are lots of dinosaurs in the park today, aren't there? When the subject is this or that, use it in the tag. This is yours, isn't it? That's your cat, isn't it? When the subject is these or those, use they in the tag. These politicians are all liars, aren't they? These apples are going to be delicious, aren't they? They is also used in the tag when the subject is someone, somebody, anyone, anybody, no one, nobody, everyone, everybody. Everybody knows you're an alien, don't they? No one believes you can make cakes, do they? Somebody will understand what I'm saying, won't they? When the subject is a negative word like Nothing, no one, none, nowhere, and neither. The statement is treated as a negative, even without the word not. So the tag is positive. None of the garages or showrooms sell flying cars, do they? Neither of us know what we're talking about, do we? There is nowhere to hide from them, is there? And finally, I said that one side of the sentence is negative and one side is positive. Well, it's English, so of course there are exceptions. To express friendly interest and to encourage the other person to give you more information, you can say something like this. You know that uh, Jim Jiminy Jimson has bought a new car and you want to know more about this new car. So, Jim, you've bought a new car, have you? This is a way of asking Jim to tell you more about his new car. So, you think you're a better fighter than me, do you? This is a good phrase to learn for when you're in prison. It's a way of challenging Mr. Big to a fight. Using a positive statement with a positive tag, it's more like a rhetorical question. You're not really expecting an answer because it's not really a question. So you got promoted and now you're the boss, are you? And so now you're thinking about firing me, are you? Well done if you've taken all of that in. It was a lot of information. There will be some notes you can copy under the video. But do you want to see how much you've taken in? Let's do a few test questions, shall we? 
I will put a sentence on the screen with a gap. You have to work out what words go in the gap. I will only leave a short gap, so I recommend that you press pause. If you're watching on YouTube or BitChute, spacebar is the pause. You don't like this colour, do you? It was just a dream, wasn't it? You haven't understood anything, have you? She had been to my castle before, hadn't she? You couldn't help me eat this big snake, could you? John would love to dance with the Queen, wouldn't he? Gary thinks the earth is flat, doesn't he? I'm working hard today, aren't I? I'm not looking at you, am I? Nothing can go wrong, can it? Let's lock the boss in a cupboard and all go home, shall we? There's no snow here today, is there? Neither of these two wheelbarrows are red, are they? So you won the lottery, and now you're a millionaire, are you? OK, this is the last one. Think hard. Imagine you work in a big office, and you go away from your desk for an hour to a really boring meeting. And when you came back, you wanted to know if there were any calls while you were away. So you say... No one called while I was away, did they? This is the end of today's video. I hope you liked it. Could you please click thumbs up? Could you even possibly share a link to the channel? That'd really help. Thank you and I'll be back next week. You're not human, are you?